Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to build a multi-seq uh, signature wallet in based on Ethereum network. So there are quite a few implementations for uh, multi-signature Ethereum wallets. Uh, the, so the first one is the most popular one is a uh, Gnosis wallet. I'm just going to show you how you can uh, deploy this contract. So we're going to go to Solidity. We're going to choose multi-sig wallet. I'm going to select raw version. I'm going to copy to my uh, clipboard. Then I'm going to launch parity dash dash chain UI. I mean chain dev UI. So you can do in any chain you want like Kovan or mainnet like any chain you want so for the testing purposes um, so contracts i'm gonna say i want to develop a contract and then i'm gonna paste in some contract then i'm gonna choose my uh, version 15 i'm gonna compile it Uh, looks like we have some issue. I'm just gonna bump the version here. Optimize, compile. Okay, here we go. So this is the the only contract that we have here, multi-sig wallet. I'm gonna click button deploy. I'm gonna provide some name. You can choose whatever you want like. Roman Storm Multisig Wallet. And I'm going to say Oracle's Org Wallet Test. Then I'm going to choose how many owners will be uh, managing this wallet. Uh, so let's say I want to add, uh, add myself. I want to add somebody else. Let's give it some name. Let's say account one. So you can enter whatever address you want. It doesn't, it, it can be any address. It doesn't have to have any money in it, like anything. So let's say I'm going to choose these three owners. The required is basically mean, means how many signature are required in order to transfer funds. So let's say if I have uh, two signatures, that's a code combination two or three, which means two signatures required uh, from those three owners. It could be like five of 10, which means like you know, there are gonna be 10 owners, but only five signatures will be required in order, in order to move funds. I'll show you how this works. So I'm gonna create this wallet. Okay, so the transaction is mined. We can verify this wallet here. So when, whenever you deploy a contract with parity, it always saves automatically here. So you go here and here we go. We can see already some information already uh, pre-populated because, because this contract has some public constant functions that it can always uh, you can always read some information uh, from your contract in the blockchain. So now we're gonna move, move some money into this wallet and then we're gonna transfer it from, from the wallet to somewhere. So let's say I'm gonna transfer to my just new wallet. I'm gonna transfer 50 ether cent. Okay, so now we're gonna ha we have 50 ether in this multi-signature wallet, and now I wanna actually um, I want to transfer it, those money somewhere else. What I need to do? I'm gonna press execute. Execute means here is my contract. I wanna interact with this contract. I wanna call some functions. I wanna do something. All public functions that 
you don't need to call it. I actually populated here, it's called queries. So you can query whatever data you want and you don't have to spend any money on it. It's completely free. When you want to store some data in a contract, like I want to move the money from this contract to somewhere else, you have to spend some gas. So here we have some functions in this contract. And I, let's say we want to, so by default, we have this field called requirement. Uh, so right now the requirement is two. If we want to change this number, we can, we can submit a change requirement. Anyways, so let's move some money from this wallet to somewhere else. I want to uh, say submit transaction. And I want to submit some money to this owner. Not, not to this owner, let's say, let's create a new account so we won't confuse ourselves. Let's create new account and I'm gonna say um, private key. Let's just say zero X, 64 characters, zero, 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 bunch of zeros. And okay. I'm just gonna say one one. Okay, I think that would be enough. One one new account to get money from Multisig. I'm not gonna uh, do any password. I'm just gonna say import. Okay, here we go. This is the account that we just created, and I'm gonna say okay. I wanna move some money from this wallet to our account. So destination address is uh, one one, new account. How much money I want to move. So here is I'm gonna show you some very cool feature in Parity, uh, this toggle. So basically most people will say, okay, I wanna move like five ether. What you actually do, you're gonna move five way. Way is not ether. Way is the, like the smallest, uh, uh, the, the, the smallest denomination in Ethereum network. So if you actually want to move five ether, you have to press this button. As you can see, this is what your five way equals to in ether. This is like, I don't know how many zeros here, but anyways, if you wanna move five ether, I have to press this toggle. It shows ether. And if you want to verify how, how, uh, how much you actually want to send in way, this is how much it, it costs in way. Um, so I, we want to send five ether. We don't need to provide any data because we just want to send a simple transaction. So you can leave it at zero. Um, this is pretty much it. So some people think that, oh, here is where I provide my value, how much I want to spend. No, you have to leave it as zero because you're not, you don't want to send any money with this transaction to your multi state wallet. Just leave it as zero if you want to withdraw your money. So I'm going to post a transaction. Okay. Let's see what happened. So now, we can verify that they, uh, we send the transaction. Okay, submit the transaction, five ether. So there is still 50 ether. As we know, we have to have at least two signatures in order to move any, uh, any money from this account. As we can see, there is uh, already one transaction that we just created. And we can verify that by, um, we need to get transaction ID. So let's say, um, Pending true from whoa, I have no idea what I just did. Owners transactions. Okay, so this is our transaction, and it, the ID I believe is zero. 
uh, this is our transaction ID. You basically say, okay, I want to see this transaction. This is my transaction ID, and I want to acquire the date. And this is the transaction ID that we just created. So if we want to say get confirmation on this transaction ID, we have zero confirmation because we haven't confirmed yet from the other owner, right? So get confirmations count on the, this transaction ID is also zero. Confirmation uh, the address is a Roman storm. Yep, as we can see, it says yes. Roman Storm initiated this transaction, and uh, he confirmed it. That's why we have true. But if we want to see if the other owner initiated this, this transaction or confirmed the transaction, that's going to show false. I mean, priority doesn't parse correctly true or false. It only shows true. But whenever the value is false, it just basically doesn't show anything. Just don't 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 go crazy. If you, if you don't see anything, just it's okay. Get transactions count, true. And we wanna see how many pending transactions we have right now. Only one, this is correct. Do we have a confirmed transaction? No, false. So let's confirm this transaction. So I don't know what, what did I put here that it all messed up. Okay, so we can also verify, is this the owner? Is this guy the owner? Yeah, the, he's the owner. Is this guy the owner? No, he's not. This is basically, I just explore you what, what, what we have in this uh, contract. We also see the events, events basically historical data, whatever happened in this contract. So we can see like we deposited some money, we then submitted a transaction ID, and when you submit a transaction, you automatically confirm it because you want to send some money to somebody else, so you send it and confirm it. And then now we're gonna confirm this transaction from the second owner, uh, account one. So in order to, for me to make a transaction, I have to have some ether into it. So I'm just uh, gonna give this guy a little bit of money. Like, let's see if we can move any money with 0.01 ether. Uh, keep in mind, this is not a mainnet. This is a development chain. So the gas limits and gas cost is uh, very minimal. Okay, so now I wanna execute uh, from account one. I wanna call function confirm transaction and my transaction ID is zero. Post. From doesn't have enough funds, require it. Okay, so we don't have enough gas in order to execute this transaction. That's not a big deal. So let's give a little bit more money to this guy. Um, so I want to say transfer from this to account one. So we just need to basically like this and then it should be enough. All right, so now I want to execute the transaction. Give me a second. I want to confirm a transaction. Transaction ID is zero from account one, post transaction. Oh man, still don't have enough gas. All right, sorry guys. Transfer account one. How much do you need? Okay. So let's see, we just confirmed the transaction, which means it should be executed now. As we can see, we have 45 ether because we just confirmed that, okay, yes, I agree with the Roman Storm that he wants to execute this transaction and he confirmed the transaction. So now 
we can see that get transactions count executed true one and then pending should be zero zero get confirmations count for transaction ID zero two there were two confirmations um, so address count one yep this guy has confirmed the transaction um, get confirmations transaction ID okay so this shows who confirmed the transaction uh, those two accounts confirm the transaction for this transaction ID is confirmed transaction ID zero yes it was confirmed we have one transaction count yep so that is pretty much it we can see this transaction it was executed true five ether and this account should have five ether right now new account here we go five ether um you can do anything you want with this multi-signature word so if someone tells you that uh, you can buy some tokens with a multi-signature wallet. All you have to do, you just have to submit a transaction. And if the ICO doesn't support fallback functions, you can put arbitrarily uh, signature in a data field, similar to what you have in like a MetaMask or, you know, any other, uh wallet uh, ethereum.org for example uh, so this is a private net as we can see right now it actually reads information from my metamask uh, from the coin chain so the like if you don't want to install uh, parity you can just use metamask and like you can change the chain like mainnet ropes and colon ring by or you can run your local some node like test rpc or something uh so here you go you it, it reads your balances it reads all your transactions everything it's pretty cool and um here you can also deploy contracts similar to what i did in parity you can say i want to deploy a new contract and you can provide the code, you can compile it, send it, deploy. It's pretty much all replicated experience without having running the parity. It's pretty cool, I think. Uh, what else? I think this is it. So what else What we have? Sim similar to how we did the transaction. We uh, sometimes, actually, yes, sometimes, um you have to execute a transaction so let's say we um we confirmed transaction but for some reason it wasn't executed we can say uh, you can provide the execute transaction and transaction id revoke confirmation so if you confirm your transaction and you want to uh you know revoke it <laughs> you can revoke it uh, you can replace the owner. Uh, here's my new, let's say if I change my address, uh, I want to replace it. This is me, this is the new owner, and you just replace the owner. Or you can completely get rid of the owner. And every action reads how many uh, signatures required. So that's, that's how multi-signature wallet works. Thank you.